we know Canada was on the struggle bus, no shade. So we we had to come back to help them get renewed <laughs> and make sure my sister had another season and another job. <laughs> Hello, hello, hello. I'm Joey Nolte with Entertainment Weekly, and I'm feeling ready and royal today because I'm in the presence of two American queens who are making the journey north for a battle to become the new queens of Canada on Canada's Drag Race, Canada versus the world. I hope you brought your cookies because they both got the good old milk. Please welcome Drag Race icons Silky Nutmeg Ganache and Raja O'Hara. Thank you both so much for being here. What's going on? Hi. Hi, Silky. Hi. How are you, Joey? I'm doing so well now that I'm talking with both of you, Silky. I love that you got the signature Silky glasses on. You came ready. You came prepared. I'm loving this. And Raja in her purple hoodie. I mean, come you on. Know. This is just... <laughs> we know purple looks good on you, Raja, always. Um, I do have to know, Raja, ever since this cast was announced, I've been so excited. Are you ready to confirm that your iconic All-Star 6 tree look is going to transform from green leaves to the red maple leaves to represent the Canadian <laughs> Okay, you gotta stay tuned to see if it turns into a maple leaf, okay? Maybe if I get some dual citizenship, it'll turn into a maple leaf, okay? <laughs> so there's actually, it could very well be. We'll just have to tune in to see. I like that. I was totally kidding, but maybe, maybe it's gonna happen. I love Canada, um, though. I will tell you what, I absolutely love Canada. And they treated us so well, so it was amazing. Silky, do you feel the same about Canada? I do love Canada, you know. I've added my own flair to poutine, you know. <laughs> so, you know, you got the, your fries your gravy and your cheese curds. I add a little chicken tender, a little ranch dressing on top, you know, okay. and, you know, and we have a, a perfect food. marriage. Yes. <laughs> we have the perfect Americanized marriage. Did you, now, did you develop that on the set of Canada's Drag Race versus the World? Is that something you've been doing for a while? You know what? You know what's actually crazy? I, since being on season 11, I have traveled to Canada quite a few times, whether it was a pride. I did a tour with Roger at Carrier once, driving through like 2 one food style, you know, Asian and the Queen style, um, going gig to gig, where I drove city to city. I slept. <laughs> <laughs> Roger was like, I ain't driving. <laughs> Wake me up when we get there, we get some food. <laughs> so, you know, Canada isn't unfamiliar to me. So, you know, I've developed this over the years. I, I do love this poutine recipe, though. I'm going to say that's going to be kind of messy coming out of your bra, though, on a lip sync. So just maybe put it in a Ziploc bag first. Well, you know, I'm a professional girl. and I know how to keep it all together. <laughs> yes, love to see it. Love to see it. No fans are... So thrilled to have both of you back, um, giving us those drag race serves that we've come to expect from both of you. And while we're excited to see you back as individuals, I love that you're competing together for the third time on a drag race season after season 11 and then All-Star 6. And you both left All-Star 6, I think, in good standing with the fans, which was, you know, I've spoken to both of you about this before. I think it's really interesting because it was sort of flipped from what you experienced after season 11. So how quickly did the call come to do this season after All-Star 6? And did you both maybe hesitate or consult each other before agreeing to go back again? I can't remember the, the time span, but it was like a quick turnaround. I actually said no a couple of times. I don't know about Silky. I said no a couple of times. Uh, I was like- I did too. I was like, mm, I don't know, man. I just got off TV. Why would I go back? I just lost on national TV. <laughs> I was still a little bit in my feelings, and then I said, you know what? Juju B said, if they call, say yes. So, you know what? I'm not turning up opportunities down, and they called me back and called Silky back because we make great TV. So, of course, we have to bring our American flavor to Canada and turn it out for the girls up there, okay? Silky, why did you hesitate and say no at first? I hesitated for many reasons, personal reasons, you know, especially after my run doing the lip syncs, you know, I felt like I would have a target on my back going in to compete. And where the girls eliminate girls, I was just like, oh Lord, anytime I'm in the bottom, I'm out of there, you know? But then I had to like say to myself, if I didn't go, I wouldn't be supporting Brooklyn in the way that she needed to be. Because you know, Brooklyn is the host. And um, even though that is my sister and we've competed against each other, and I was robbed of Bootylicious um, during season <laughs> 11. 
completely robbed. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> the people in the the people in the building know. Okay. If you was there, you know. Okay. So you know, um, I was just like, let me go back and support my sister because I've been, you know, the host of Drag Race Wakanda, and they did a Wakanda versus the world, and Brooklyn got the invite. I knew that she would do the same. So. I, I, it's part of me was just like, let me go back to support my sister um, in her endeavors. And I, we know Canada was on a struggle bus, no shade. So we we had to come back to help them get renewed <laughs> and make sure my sister had another season and another job. Okay. And I'm sure Roger went back for the same because she said good TV. Okay. And so we went back to go do that. And I think we did a very well job. Yes. I, so this is all just to keep Brooklyn Heights employed. This is sisters, uh, supporting sisters. I sisters love this. Sisters supporting sisters, okay. The time has come. World, meet your next host nation. Bonjour, and welcome to Canada. We're looking for the next global drag superstar. Now that I've won your heart, Time to win the craft. It's an interesting dynamic with you all because you're you're being judged by Brooklyn Heights on the panel, who obviously first competed against you both as a fellow contestant on season eleven. So was that an odd dynamic to settle into at first? And did you all talk maybe beforehand and sort of just to clear any awkwardness that might have arisen from it? It's all right because we judging her too. Okay. <laughs> Period. Uh, say something. Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> I didn't have a problem with Brooklyn judging uh, because I knew what I was signing up for. I knew that, I know that Brooklyn is a queen of integrity and taste. So I know that, you know, she's going to judge us fairly and accordingly. And the one thing I know about me and the one thing I know about Silky is that we're going to turn it out regardless. Anytime it's an opportunity to hit the stage, we're going to turn it out as far as the looks, as far as the personality, as far as charisma, uniqueness, nerve, and the talent, we absolutely embody that. So, you know, let her judge what she gonna judge, okay? Okay, and that's on period. Sylvia, do you have anything to add to that? On period. Just on period. <laughs> Roger said it all, on period. She judged what she judged. And we were judging her too. You're right. <laughs> I love that. Wait, so are we judging Brooke's fashions? Are we judging her judging? Like, what is being judged here? The fashions. Um, we judge her to make sure she get it right. Because she don't, we'll have to read. <laughs> you know, we was there. We don't get it wrong. Even though Brooklyn is the host, we on her ass too. Because okay. if she, she <laughs> as we are representing her, she is representing us too. That's right. And so... It's, it's very that, you know? So it wasn't no odd dynamic because at the end of the day, she is there to do a job and I was there to do a job too. And before they gave me a call, they knew the tea and they wanted that tea. And guess what? That tea, the tea tastes so tea? good in Canada. What's the tea, Christine? What's the tea, Christine? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we did, as we did see with the UK cast, the versus the world franchise, it's it's a very strategic game. So does this mean that maybe we'll see like strategic alliance between Silky and Raja on this season because you are so close? Where girls go wrong in Drag Race is they come in with this big strategy. My only strategy coming in was to tear it up each episode. I didn't have a big strategy. Um, I wasn't going to vote out the competition. I wasn't going to vote out the weakest link. I was going to do what would need to be done in the moment. And that was my only strategy. Yeah, I didn't have a strategy coming in uh, other than to never be in the bottom. So I don't even have an opportunity to be voted off or have to worry about hat forming an alliance. Because, you know, when you're at the top, you're at the top. Okay. But I did know coming in that you know, there was a possibility that I would be a major target for people because, you know, we had just got off TV. I was just like in the top of All Star 6. So, you know, coming back, it was a little bit nerve wracking. But, you know, like I said, I just came in with the with the thought and the mindset that I was never going to be in the bottom. Just without spoiling too much, I also want to get into what are some like mood words that you can use to tease like your runway packages. We see some teases in the trailer, like Silky, there is one gown that you are wearing that it just has this pattern all over it that just looks 
wonderful. Raja, I know we can expect some great things from you too. So what can you use as like some mood words to tease your uh, runway packages this season? Money. Cause I spent the time money. I spent way too much money for six episodes. Okay. But I wasn't gonna let Brooklyn critique me negatively. Let me see the moves that I'm feeling that describes like all of my runways. Sickening. Period. Okay. <laughs> Period. Yeah. Yeah. Runway ready. Couture. Every time you come out on that runway, it is just electric. It was elegance, it was grace, and it was confidence. This look is everything. I couldn't take my eyes off of you. <laughs> and that's lunch, everyone. So was there was there anybody else on this cast who really surprised you in terms of what they brought to the competition? Like, was there somebody who was particularly intimidating as a competitor? I wouldn't say intimidating. <laughs> I was gonna say, mm, intimidating, not so much. But there are some sickening girls. Like, I think mostly everybody on the cast was very sickening. Like, what they brought to the table, I think people are gonna be absolutely surprised. I think everybody stepped it up from the original season, for sure. I think I'm the proudest of Vanity Milan because she okay. had really came in strong and dynamic and Everything was stepped up, makeup, costumes, her spirit. Oh, I love to see that because she had a lot of goodwill from the fans, I think, too, after that season. So it was really nice to see her back in the mix. Um, how did you feel about a uh, higher winner being among the cast in ISIS? Come back through. We're going to make sure that you won the, the fairly. We're going we're gonna to let her come in and stop on us. <laughs> no. The good thing is that, you know, she came in with a crown and she left with one, too. <laughs> that's true that's a great point yes that is whether she won or not she left with the crown either way that is a lovely point Rasha. she's a very sickening girl like that girl is fashion oh my god yes fashion like yes the way her brain thinks about stuff like oh she's disgusting i like i live and i guess that's one of the the greatest thing about going to canada i didn't know what to expect but going there and with the girls that I competed with, like, it's been awesome. You know, like, I've always had a dynamic relationship with Raj O'Hare. But, like, to go there and meet girls like Anita Wiglet, mm -hmm. who was one of the nicest and humble drag queens I've ever met. But at the same time, we'll read. Because she read okay. me the whole time, you know? Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, she made me feel like I had a sister from around the world. And I think that's the, the beauty about the around um, the versus the world franchise is that you're getting to meet girls of the franchise. Sometimes we don't get to meet girls until like DragCon, which we will all be at DragCon UK. But to meet these girls and to hear their stories and even to like Victoria Scon, who like cracked a damn knee on the show and left and to come back, um, what she did was impactful as well. So every girl there was, you know, amazing. And then we leave the show, and then Rita Bag is announced as a judge for Drag Race, you know? Okay. So so it, it just goes to show, like, drag isn't dying, and we're there doing what we need to do. Yes, it is. It is such a strong cast. Everybody has such a powerful impact in their own right. And I think I do want to talk to you both about things that you did on past seasons that made a big impact. I mean, Silky, you had the milk and cookies on season 11 and All Star 6. You pulled the whole bottle of liquor out of your bra in the lip sync. You did, of course, the, the Silky Nutmeg and Nosh episode, the lip sync episode was so great. Um, so I have to know, did you feel maybe a pressure to maybe like up the game for lip syncs if you have to lip sync on this season? I wasn't even thinking about that, you know, going on. My focus was just like, look, sickening on the runway. I wanted to elevate my runways, even from All Star 6, because you saw a few runways, but you didn't get the chance to see all of them. And I'm not a girl that take photos of the runways that I didn't, you know, I did. I, I didn't show. So like, I just wanted to make sure what I was showing was great. And with the lip syncs, talent is talent. And I thank God that I have it. So I, that was the least of my concerns about anything, you know? Well, Raja, you talked about in 2021 that you spent $600 on your entire runway package for All Star 6. So 
this time, did because it was a shorter amount of episodes, did you maybe work with more designers or did you make all of your outfits again with like a very low budget? You know what? It wouldn't be Raja representing Raja if I didn't show up and make everything that I showcased. So mm -hmm. I think that's the one thing that I love about doing drag is the fact that it can come from my hands and can come from my mind to my hands to fruition to something I could put on my body. Uh, so, of course, this season you will get 100% Raja O'Hara, okay? Uh, I won't say that the budget was $600. It was probably like six of one, six of uh, two, okay? <laughs> do you have an exact amount? Is it Was it really around you know, 600 I don't actually have an exact amount, but, you know, I am a girl that, like, I can spend wisely, okay? Even though it's six episodes, I don't know how many of those episodes I'm guaranteed to be on. So I got to spend wisely, okay? I'm not going to spend $100,000 to win $100,000, okay? Period. That don't make sense. <laughs> yeah, it's a, that would be an odd investment, I think. But, I mean, you spend your money wisely, as we saw on past seasons. I mean, just with what you did with $600 was just like, still blows my mind to this day. Um, so I'm very excited to see what you have on the runway this time around. Silky, you too. Um, now, we also know that certain challenges happen on every season of Drag Race. So was there certain challenges that you went into expecting on Canada versus the world that you were like super excited to do and then were super excited for fans to see? Inside tea, Joey. I think for me this season, the things that I was usually good at, I was just okay at, but the things that I usually struggle with, I excelled at. Inside of tea, Joey, okay. Okay. <laughs> I worked harder on certain like challenges to make sure that I wasn't at the bottom of the pack. I did put in extra effort, you know, because as being on Drag Race, you have to be a well-rounded queen. And, you know, in the past, it was consistent. Like some of the challenges that I did, like on season 11, so our challenges was inconsistent. Like I'd be safe or the bottom. And I ain't want that. I wanted to, you know, Trying to raise that bar for myself. In the bottom, baby. On the design challenge, yeah, that's me. <laughs> right. So, you know, I just wanted to make sure that I put in a little more, a little extra love on the challenges that I didn't do so well in in the past. You know, I personally was looking forward to just like whatever was thrown our way. Of course, you know, Snatch Game, we know Snatch Game is coming. So that's something we all have to be prepared for. Um, and you know, I just got to do my first one for All Star, so that was pretty exciting. As Latoya, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yes. uh, so I'm like excited for the Snatch Game, of course, and any of the design challenge. If there's gonna be a design challenge, you know, I'm ready to tackle that one head on. Uh, but what I'm excited for the fans to see. Oh, I can't really give that tea up. And we did get, it looks like we got some uh, interesting uh, teases in the trailer too that came out. The fact that Justin Trudeau is a guest, I think, it's just, it's so great. The Prime Minister of Canada, Justin Trudeau! <laughs> this one is about to go down in her story. My jaw just dropped. I have to know, Silky, you famously picked Miley Cyrus up and gave her a piggyback ride on season 11. So uh, did you try that with uh, Mr. Trudeau? No, I ain't want her to get aroused and <laughs> then we'll be turning this into a different show, you know. So no, I man, the Twitter service wasn't having that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> when the camera's cut. Yes, that's when you tried it. That would have had my sister the show call up in Canada. Uh-uh, don't do it, sis. Right. <laughs> what was that like having him on set, though? Because, I mean, I think this is the first time that, like, a world leader has been on a season of Drag Race. So, I mean, that had to have been a really interesting day on the set when he was there. For me, it was powerful. I think it really speaks to him and his love for his country, and then also for our community too. I think that's powerful for a world leader to show up in that way on such a scale. You know what I'm saying? Not just to his country, but to the world. He's showing up, showing out, and like representing and saying, you know, here we are. Okay. For a queer show, yeah. For a queer show, for sure. And he was cute too. I ain't gonna even lie. Okay. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. I'll see you, Justin. <laughs> it's always a factor, yes, always a factor. 
Now, Silky, you are also in the trailer talking about someone going home based on delusion. We also see you, it looks like you get really emotional on the main stage. And it looks like there is, we only see the hand covered in purple. So I'm assuming it's Raja that is comforting you. Although, because we only see that it's a purple hand. Um, Victoria Scone also says in the trailer that there's a lot of sabotage going on. So I think it's safe to assume that this is going to be a dramatic season. So can you tease maybe what like, like, is it a dramatic season? As as dramatic as the trailer she says? I don't remember. Ah! Because I was just saying to Roger, what was I boo-hoo about? Okay. That fiercely. You know, the cocktails are on top. Be strong, honey. Y'all gonna okay. stop giving that white look and give me some dark liquor, honey. <laughs> so I could keep it together. But have you ever seen somebody cry so sick and just with the little tear? It just, oh, I say, girl, you better put on. You better go in. <laughs> it's the it's most crazy. beautiful cry. <laughs> but why was the water just coming down on one cheek? Okay. <laughs> I was looking, I was like, oh, my God. Strategic. And she had put it, did some eye drops. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> to Andrew. No, don't do it. Okay. But I mean, it's, you know, the UK versus the world was a very dramatic season. There was a lot of drama that came from that. So do you think that this season is also like, does it get a little spicy? I think this season definitely lives up to the standard of what we expect with Drag Race and with all stars coming back together. You know, there's a lot of ego that comes in the room. It's a whole lot of everything, a whole lot of attitude, a lot of spice. So, of course, it's going to be some ups and downs, some roller coaster rides. I think for six episodes, it's going to be great. It's going to be just enough, but you're going to be wanting some more, I'm sure. Who do you think fans should have their eye on as being, like, the shadiest of the group? Ooh. There's a lot of shady girls on this cast. I don't know if they want to say it, because, you know, they Canadian. It's a lot of shady girls on the <laughs> All of Canada. <laughs> they known for being nice, but they shady. Mm -hmm. They like what we call nice nasty. So we got to watch out for the four Canadian girls. We got to watch out for some Canadian queens. We got to watch out for some UK girls. They're down on the beach. Oh, and then they're down on the beach. <laughs> Oh, so basically everybody, <laughs> everybody except you two. What a nice guy! I know okay. you, are, you both are very, very kind. You both are. You've always been nothing but lovely. But um, Silky, you did hint earlier that Anita will read someone if she has to. So is she like a stealth shady person? No, I think um, from what we chatted about. Anita felt extra comfortable with me and Roger because she felt like we were just sisters. And I think that's the great thing about this season. The girls just felt so comfortable around us because they had no choice. They didn't seen us on television for so long. Okay. And U.S. Drag Race have been the standard for so long. We're just sisters. You know, sisters read and they cackle and they cut up. And I was just very fortunate that Anita started reading me right away after like feeling like she knew me. But that made me feel like, okay, like girls really look up to us and I'm happy that I was there to just be a part. But to answer your question, yes, uh, Anita is shady. Anita is shady, yes, okay. <laughs> and I don't know if it's stealth or not. I think she come in guns blazing. Oh my goodness. This look is marvelous. I am excited to see you here, but I'm a judgy bitch. That's why I'm on this side today. <laughs> you know, you're getting judged by the best of the best. The cast did cause a stir prior to the season. I mean, Raja, you you quote tweeted Rita's address of the blackface incident in her past. She said in a statement, she posted that she already addressed it. She feels ashamed. So was it something that came up beforehand? Um, and what did you both think of that address? Me and Rita had a conversation about this the very first day of filming. She pulled me to the side and she talked about it and she was just like, it's something I'm ashamed of. But she was just like, I just wanted you to know that about me. And she was just like, I didn't know anything about that, you know, back in the day. Like, and I think the times are changing and cultures are changing depending on countries. Because if we're gonna call a spade a spade, Justin Trudeau was also in blackface, the world leader. And so if we're gonna, do that, we have to say that, you know, times are changing. People are holding themselves accountable 
which I can appreciate because we can't move until people hold themselves accountable. So with Rita pulling me to the side on on during filming and telling me this, I have nothing but respect for her because it's not something like she's trying to hide. It's something that she's trying to make the world better of. And that's all I can ask for. I personally didn't like repost it or anything because I mean, yeah, RuPaul's Drag Race Live in Las Vegas and <laughs> the world is changing. And I'm glad to see it change. Well, I decided to speak on it or just repost and I said, keep my sister's name out your mouth because it's an issue that we had, that she had already addressed uh, prior to her getting on to season one of Canada's Drag Race. So she addressed it then, but it was an incident that happened 10 years ago, 10 plus years ago. So for me, we always, you know, as a, as a strong, proud black person, we always want people to recognize and realize the accountability that they need to take for actions that they've made. And I feel like when you apologize and then there's action that comes after an apology that lets you know that that, you know, it may have been a one-off, it was, something that was done when they were younger and didn't maybe know, know better. But now that they know better, they've done better and they've been better in the world. So I feel it was tacky for whoever to even bring it up in a situation to make it a current relevant thing, especially during the time that we had just gotten announced. So I felt like it was very strategic on the on part of how it came out and why it came out. So that's why I said, keep my sister's name out your mouth because she's doing so much great things in the world, in the community, for the community, for everybody in the community. I've seen it personally firsthand. I know Rita's heart. I've gotten a chance to like build a sisterhood with her. So I definitely stand in her corner and I believe in, in her, okay? So, you know, like I said, with these being my sisters, but I'm a ride or die for all of my sisters. Joey, I don't know if you know her, but yeah, any girl that I've called my sister, I'm a ride or die for, okay? That's what I was gonna ask, is that it does seem like anytime you're part of a cast, both of you, it's like they're, do you, do, do they become your family in a way? Because you speak very passionately about your sisters here. Um, so it, it, does it really feel like you were a family after you film a season with other queens? Yes. Some girls. <laughs> All right. <laughs> naturally, you're just closer to some girls than the others, you know? Mm hmm That's just naturally, so like, yeah. But, you know, doing a show like this, like, we we are around each other so much. We get to learn and talk and chat about our upbringing. We, we learn so much about each other during the filming process. And then, you know, of course, we're all around each other. We're bonding. We're sharing a shared experience. So, of course, we're, like, bonding and building, like, lifetime bonds because who else can speak to the experience that we're having? The stakes are high and the heels are the highest. Who will be queen of the mother fucking world? Ah! Ah! Iconic! Find out on Canada's Drag Race, Canada versus the world. After all of this competing against each other on three seasons, you and Silky, I mean, the only thing that's left, would you two join the long fan demanded RuPaul's best friends race together as a team if that ever happened? Hell Baby. yeah. Hell yeah. I mean, but, they already came and got the baddest two to compete against each other. So Silky better bring it, first and foremost, okay? No. <laughs> but if we are teamed up together, you already know that's a double whammy. The girls better hang it up, send it home. We got looks, we got personality, we got everything you need, okay? Okay. Y'all better go and sit yeah. back. Y'all don't want that. And, you know, we're going to talk some, some cash money stuff in the confessionals, too. You already okay? know it. Don't let us do our <laughs> confessionals together, too. <laughs> oh, baby, that's going to be a whole nother show. The girls will hate us. If there could have been a camera in that long road trip that I know, Silky, you told me that you have taken before, I think it was the two of you and Akira, too? Yes. Uh -huh. Right? Yes. I, just make that a reality show, honestly. So, yeah, confessionals, double confessionals. Let's do it. Baby, if you just had a camera to see me drive and Roger sleep and Akira just trying to see if my blind self really can see why the snow is going on. Okay, first of all, I go to sleep because Silky is doing the driving and you know Silky is blind as a bat, okay? I say, if I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna go out in my sleep, okay? Lord, <laughs> let me go out in my sleep. 
<laughs> One thing that will certainly not put us to sleep, I am sure, Canada's Drag Race, Canada versus the World, premieres November 18th on Crave in Canada and the WoW Presents Plus subscription streaming service everywhere else. Raja and Silky, thank you so much for your time today. This was such a lovely conversation. I enjoy every time I get to talk to both of you. So thank you so much, and I can't wait to see you on the season. I enjoyed it so much, and I just want to shamelessly plug Cocktails for a Queen Volume 2 will be coming out very shortly, and it does feature all the girls in Canada's Drag Race, Canada versus the World. And everybody can check out EW.com, where we previewed Silky's last uh, Cocktails book so everybody should check that out as well um thank you both again so much all right see y'all later